the mass on that deer. But it really is the best tip that I've ever gotten on shooting a bow.
bit since the shot. I do have two tags, so we we're waiting to see if these other birds were gonna come up to. Uh, there were birds gobbling back behind him, but man, what a crazy hunt. He was, he came in just, it was agonizing, it was so slow. He was standing here, well he probably stood at 20 yards forever, and then he was, came into like six yards, and then he decided to do a big loop around our decoy spread, and the shot was uh, probably close to 30. We, we had some time to look through the video, and it looks like that arrow does get up in there. He was quartering away from me just a little bit, so uh, I think sun's starting to come out now. I think we're going to make our way down the hill. He, he got up and flew right down towards his ditch, so we're going to see if he's uh, holed up in a brush pile or something down there. But like I said, it does look like the arrow gets up in there, so hopefully he's just laying at the bottom of the hill. Whoa. So Jared, come check this out. Find it? No, a giant deadhead. is incredible you can't even get your hands around it we're looking for this turkey in this ditch and I'm walking the top and Cooper's walking the bottom and just spotted this you see all the bones and stuff kind of buried it's been here a long time but what a giant I mean you can't even get your hand around some of these spots the mass I don't know if you can appreciate it but that is a giant deer. Unfortunately, gotta leave this here until we get a salvage tag, but I'm gonna keep going up this ditch and hopefully that turkey's not too far. Jared, is that your knock? Where? Right along the fence up here. There he is. <laughs> That's a goose, that was another turkey. <laughs> yeah, he really didn't go all that far. Cause... That's crazy. Depending on where he landed, he didn't go far at all. Looks like he came in right here. Pretty bird. I tag out. brought the turkey down here by the deadhead to do one final interview and I don't think I've mentioned it yet but uh, we're on the project farm this morning that farm that I deer hunted quite a bit this past fall and it's actually sold tomorrow is the closing date so this is our final day on the project farm and you probably couldn't have drawn up a better morning a big old tom it's probably one of the bigger turkeys I've shot in quite a while and then of course the giant deadhead unbelievable mass to it just a really cool find so uh, unfortunately I'm gonna miss this place but uh, like I said it's hard to beat this kind of morning as our final day on the project farm. You know turkey hunting for me is something that kind of passes the time in between deer seasons. I mean that down there is, is kind of what I live for but it is fun trying to chase these things with a bow and no blind and filming it and you know adding all those different facets that makes it a little more of a challenge like deer hunting. 
So it was a fun morning uh, with Cooper chasing these things down and uh, that's the end of the story of the project farm unfortunately but like I said a good way to end it. It was definitely a shame to see that buck that Jared found dead on the project farm. Probably almost as big of a shame as Jared not being able to hunt the project farm this coming season. But it, it comes to, to show us what, how special those five-year-old bucks really are. We think that if we pass them up and if we don't shoot them and if, if our neighbors don't shoot them, that they're gonna be there again for us to hunt the next season. But a certain percentage of them, you know, higher than what we would like, die from natural causes you know regular buck mortality can result from disease it can result from fighting we get a lot of that on this farm we find a lot of dead bucks that i know are the result of the bucks killing each other during the rut you know cars can hit them uh, you know and occasionally you're going to get somebody that will wound one you know that that you find later dead but uh, it's just like i said it's, it's so special when you get that one that makes it through that has the genetic potential to really be a big antlered buck and gets the age to show off those genetics. So we never want to take those deer for granted. In this next segment today, I'm going to talk about the best tip that I ever got on shooting a bow. A long time ago when I first started shooting a bow, I read in a hunting magazine that you should keep aiming at the target until the arrow hits. And that never really sank in that well for me because it didn't make sense. I didn't understand that, yeah, okay, you can do it with your eye, you know, stay focused. But what, what they were really trying to imply was keep your pin on the spot that you're trying to hit for as long as you can. And that has really fixed a lot of problems that I've had over the years. Whenever I start getting inconsistent with my shooting and my groups start to get big, I just focus on keeping that bow arm pointed at the spot. Not necessarily the sight pin because that takes too much, it's going to move. But if I can keep my bow arm pointed toward the target all the way through the shot until the arrow hits, it seems to take those group sizes and just cut them in half. You know, if I'm shooting at 20 yards and I'm making about a four inch group, I'm thinking, man, I need to be shooting better than that. All I have to do at that point is focus on that bow arm and just holding it steady, as steady as I can until the arrow hits and I'll shrink that group right in half. So I'm gonna take a couple shots here real quick and show you that, but it's a super simple tip, but it really is the best tip that I've ever gotten on shooting a bow. And I believe it will help you to be more consistent too. Okay, so now all I'm thinking about as I'm aiming is trying to keep my arm there for as long as I can. And you'll see some people, they'll drop their bow. And that's the thing that gets you in trouble the most. It's real common. And I don't know, I don't really know why they do that. I think it's just a bad habit, uh, but just focus on keeping the bow arm up and pointed at the target until the arrow hits. <clears throat> so that's the best tip I ever got. Oh, and, and, and let's not forget about these Menards brand shooting gloves that I've been using. And I know I catch a lot of flack on these, but I really feel like that's an important part of shooting my bow too, because I don't get any bow hand torque because these things are slick. So there's nothing that keeps my hand from you know, sliding around on the grip. And it feels really awkward at first, but if you get used to shooting like this, you'll find that you, know, you don't have that built-in tension that comes from having a, a, a sticky grip you know, against the bow where you, know, you can build up tension and then the bow will snap back. So maybe there's two tips today. One is to buy the 49 cent Menards brand shooting gloves. And the other one is to keep your bow arm up and on the spot you're trying to hit until the arrow hits. Well, I appreciate you joining us this week. We'll see you right back here again next week for the next episode of Midwest Whitetail. And remember to always dream big.